What's up? How are you today? Let's talk about the Dragon Ball Z game nobody has ever heard of. Dragon Ball Z Idainaru Dragon Baru Densetsu Which, with my elementary Japanese knowledge, I kind of interpret it as Dragon Ball Z, the legend of the Grand Dragon Ball or something like that. If you have actual competent Japanese knowledge, please correct me on this. Since I no longer have access to my PlayStation 1 with a toothpick impaling it to play games I shouldn't be playing anymore, we're going to be using footage from Rayleigh's. I think that's how you pronounce their name. Thank you for uploading footage of this obscure game I played back when I was 7 years old. Now, you gotta understand, back in the late 90s, we had basically zero Dragon Ball Z games in America. The only way you could play the games released in Japan were if you imported them. And I had access to three Dragon Ball games at the time. Ultimate Battle 22, GT Final Bout, and the topic of today's video, Idainaru Densetsu. And I'm just gonna call it The Legend to keep it simple and so I don't not. My script says the word donut, so we're gonna roll with donut. So I donut butcher the Japanese language too fiercely. I'm gonna keep it real with you. Ultimate Battle 22, garbage. Clunky and slow with hardly any frames of animation. GT Final Bout, same set of garbage, but now it's in 3D, but it's okay. As a DBZ game star child, I could stomach these Timu garbage bin games. So imagine my surprise when I was introduced to the third game, Dragon Ball Z The Legend. This game is competent. It doesn't feel like a laggy mess when we were first introduced to HD TVs that had severe amount of input lag compared to their CRT counterpart. This game had responsive controls that didn't feel like you were fighting the character you were controlling to do what you wanted them to do. That should be the bare minimum. But when all you have to compare it to is two games that belong in a dumpster, this is the holy grail of DBZ controls at the time for me. There are two versions of this game, the PlayStation 1 version that I had, and a prettier Sega Saturn version that I never played. So I'll be sticking to the PS1 version in this video as that's all I've ever had access to. There wasn't much content in this game, all you had were Z campaign, versus battle, and options. Thank you to my Genki textbook for teaching me how to read Japanese and giving me anxiety when I got called to solve a question in front of the entire class. Definitely traumatic. It's a fairly simple and short game. You can literally complete the entire game in less than two hours. You start from the Nappa fight all the way to the Majin Buu fight. This is a 3v3 team based fighter. There are 2D sprites and a generic 3D background. You have your basic attack, block, key, charge, and the crazy part, there are only two movement buttons. You don't fly left, right, up, or down, but only use the up and down buttons on the D-pad to either move towards your opponent or away from them. Isn't that a novelty? It's either rush that shit down or turtle away. If you hold the key button before moving, you embody your aura and move lightning fast. But watch out as this depletes your key. When you run out of key, your character gets burnt out and is left open to attack. Now is your chance to do some combos. I don't know the exact input, but just turning your d-pad in a 360 motion while mashing your attack button will usually get your characters to do these crazy combos. They'll attack your opponent at all angles and start launching them around as you chase them until you run out of key. Now, since there's a key meter, you'd expect to use your key to use your super attack, right? Wrong. The key meter is only for your super dashes and little key blasts. Heck, you can't inflict any actual damage on your opponent except with a super attack. Not only that, but every super attack does the exact same amount of damage, which is one third of your opponent's life bar. So with this incredibly weird gimmick, how exactly do you pull off a super move? You see that power balance gauge down there? You and your team of three must pummel the opponent to sway the power balance gauge in your favor. When that happens, a super move will unleash by itself depending on the character you're controlling. Every character has about two super moves each at most, unless you're one of the unlucky ones like Kid Gohan that only have one. And my lord, are they long? When I would play this game, I would always make sure that someone other than Goku would pull off their super attack, as their spirit bomb took nearly two whole minutes to unleash. Hey man, all that time would add up. If you fight three characters, 
and every character dies after every third super attack, according to my calculations, 3 times 3 equals 9. And Goku would launch a spirit bomb every second time he had a super. You would launch a spirit bomb 4 times, meaning he spent 8 minutes of the fight just watching Goku throw a spirit bomb. Not too different from the anime, right? <laughs> In a sea of trash, this was the fresh water I needed as a kid to believe Dragon Ball Z could have good video games. Even though GT Final Bout spoiled me on transformations like Super Saiyan 4 and the like, at least Dragon Ball Zeto, Idaidaru Dragon Ball Densetsu gave me a good game with these blonde haired transformations I've never seen.